Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we are back to Lego Batman 2 DC Super Heroes. Let's continue. So, we, we really haven't been playing as, as Batman much, have we? Lately, and we really don't have any intention of really even getting back to playing as Batman. Even when we are... Uh, attempting to finish all the levels in free play mode, there's not a huge motivation to play as Batman or Robin. Both of both of them are pretty much, I'd say, 95% redundant at this point. Is the vehicle? Big Batman! I don't know if this hammer did it. I have unlocked So we're going through the map here, trying to place markers where things we haven't gotten yet are. I'm trying to get the bottom third of the Gotham City slash Gotham Island. So, from my understanding, this looks like a jump here, but it's not, it's just a stairway. Way. Uh, from my understanding, the Gotham is supposed to have five rivers, and those five rivers were what opened the doorway to a lot of smuggling, and that's where crime got its start in Gotham City and never really let go to the point where let's see where it opened the door for super villains to eventually show up but for a long time they really aren't even super villains and then they introduced the Court of Owls concept, a secret society that is just potentially doing criminal activity for decades. And in the New 52, Jonah Hex was in Gotham City, and he was dealing with bad people in Gotham City in the past, like 1800s, 1700s. So, really when he gets down to it, you have to wonder why uh, it, why Bruce Wayne and his parents were even living in Gotham City. It seems to be such a crime-ridden, dangerous place. You'd think they'd be somewhere safer. Even though I think his father was trying to run for mayor and change things, that doesn't mean you risk your family. Is this thing... where is this thing? It must be all the way up here at the top. I guess. Can't be any anywhere over here. It's kind of a shame there's nothing hidden in the way but no gold brick or anything. Now available to you. Next thing on the map is this one here. Let's go that way. 
Now, DC is about to reboot again, so who's to know what what will be the history of Gotham City and all that. Probably won't drastically change. There was a good Two-Face uh, like comic book uh, for a while where Two-Face was dealing with um, <coughs> these people, these two crime, the, no, it was one crime lord, yeah, where her sister died and they were twins and they blamed Harvey Dent because he was a prosecutor and put him away. Type stuff. So his his history of being a police, uh, a district attorney. Harvey well, Dent was a district attorney. Yeah. Uh, I said police because we just unlocked police commissioner Gordon. Um, is coming back to haunt him, and so he was fighting with them with that crime lord and working with Batman. So I think it was called Batman and Two Face. What what it was was I think several issues of Batman and Robin. Um, but Robin at the time was dead, so it became Batman and somebody else every time. So one one issue it would be Batman and Two Face, one issue it would be Batman and Catwoman, and it was a, just kind of a grab bag. Of what stories you got? I suppose I should tell the story of how I got into reading DC comic books. Anyway, it's kind of a silly story, and it's kind of the about the dumbest reason ever to get into doing anything. There literally was just a sale for a year's worth of. Uh, oh, there was a gold one there, and I missed it. Okay, good. For, there was a sale for years worth of comics, DC comics, and so I said, give me, sure, give me one of everything, I'll just try it out. And so I got a year's worth of Wonder Woman, a year's worth of Superman, a year's worth of some other things. In the process of getting some of these things, some of the books were actually cancelled and replaced with other things or I was given extensions of some of some things so I think Batman in particular ended up going closer to 16 issues 16 months than the original 12 I paid for and I gained an interest in the DC Universe but I will tell you I was not having a fun time reading it as the subscription system went. It was uh, it was too slow to get the comic books in that fashion. I literally started re receiving it like the the issues on issue four for everything. So I was halfway through one story and halfway through another story. So I guess that's what the whole sale was all about, really. It was just a trick that I wasn't smart enough to realize, you know, if you start a subscription on any month before, besides January, the story's going to be just in the middle, and you're going to have to go get back issues if you want to do it. And because it was too slow, because I started the middle story, I eventually just decided to transfer it all the trade paperbacks which are a lot easier to collect than I think really the right way to do DC and Marvel Comics. Uh, if DC and Marvel Comics both like run out of money and go out of business because people buy trade paperback, paperbacks and don't 
by the issues as they soon come out. I don't think that's really even your fault because the their level of quality on different issues are so wild. Now, I would say for independent ones, you might consider getting every issue and suffering through it. But even if you are do have a subscription and get every issue, I would recommend waiting to actually read it, which is would be an incredibly difficult task to sit there and have at least six months of comic books sitting somewhere and you, you're not ready to uh, read it simply because, let's see. So I need to get up here. Here's, we, here we go, we can start here with Man Bat. <laughs> and so I read a bunch of issues and liked it enough to start getting trade paperbacks. And so I got almost every issue one of the new 52 uh, probably I'd say 70% of issue twos of the new 52 series from DC and I was just focusing on DC and I've read probably of the of those issue twos I would say uh, a good percentage, maybe 60% of the ones I have and then there's more I need to get and then I've gotten a lot of issue threes of the big name ones. I've probably gotten all the big name ones like Superman and Batman and all that but then there are definitely some smaller name lesser known comics that I haven't gotten into yet. And then I've kind of, gee, I wasn't really expecting to land there. Uh, and then I've kind of fallen out of the graces of it. Uh, and it's 100% because of the reboots. The, the new 52, to me and it was sold and promised as being the new starting on point for let's buy that there we go uh, for readers but really two years into it it's just the truth is blatantly obvious that it is just a reboot for reboot's sake and all the new readers that read the new 52 they don't really care about them and their interest in the story and so they're just gonna do rebirth I think they even did a reboot even between new 52 and rebirth if if I'm correct And so the, they keep repeating their same mistakes over and over again. It's the the difference and the problem here. There it is. Is quite simply, DC Marvel are uh, publishing companies, and if they were anything but comic book publishing companies, they would obviously know that what you do as a publishing company is you give a stipend to somebody, you expect the book to be finished by a certain time, and then you publish the book, and then because it's a book it doesn't sell that much. And there's a couple of things that they're just refusing to agree with, agree with there. They're, they're not willing to probably pay people in advance for their work for comic books. They're not willing to have delays or wait because they want the monthly release cycle, which 
really just needs to go out, out away. Or at least be flexible with it. Um, they they just want to have new god new new comics every month regardless of the quality and that's just not never going to be how you get quality it just can't be hmm. let's go this way i suppose so i believe now we've done the bottom third of this so yeah let's work our way we might even take a, a little bit of a break from looking at looking for cars and things um. <laughs> What's really weird about, like, DC is you have this character, the Superman, that by all rights in my mind should be free domain. It should be that anybody, uh, free domain, I mean public domain is, what, is the actual term. By all rights, Superman <laughs> should be public domain by now. And if it was, then we would have so many people would want to write so many kids that would want to write uh, Batman stories and then either self publish them or just uh, give them to friends or or something else with it and you know half of those stories would be better than half of the stories that the DC releases each month because they they're it's a resource that's being squandered and it's a resource that is at this point part of America's national heritage and I don't know how many stories would really come out because here's hot girl Alright. Uh, if you think about it, Sherlock Holmes is in public domain, and so, in theory at least, you could not get sued if you went and wrote a Sherlock Holmes story today. Uh, but how many new Sherlock Holmes stories come out? Uh, none. As far as I know. Uh, but that's where the whole fan fiction stuff comes from. Is if the if they were just things like Superman should be public domain, and if fan fiction could be sold, then DC would probably not have ever rested on their lawyer laurels. They would have put as much money as necessary to fund the right writers and the right artists to make sure they're always putting out the best quality Superman story ever. But that just doesn't happen. What happens is there's favoritism, there's cheapness going on, there's uh, just bad quality production all around. There was one Superman story where Superman, for some reason, decided just to walk across America. And I'm trying to figure out what that was all about. And that's that's not even the new 52 I, I was reading. Uh, that was before then. The Superman story I got in the new 52 was practically barely even Superman. Uh, it was slightly focused around a uh, the Damon Knight saga, which like aliens that were coming to take over the world, and and this was the saga that was supposed to uh, intertwine all the. 
PC universe, or at least some of it. it wasn't all of it, it was some some stories dealt with Damon uh, And so Superman did like an issue or two on that. Uh, there was something the the main story was what was it? Like these three characters that had like psychic powers uh, were trying to fight Superman and succeeding for some reason. Uh, I mean, it was rather strange. It was new. I think uh, Lois Lane had some kind of psychic powers but was also in a coma. I mean, and this was the new 52 within like the first 12 issues because they didn't want to just do a reboot again and and tell his origin story. Um, so, in my opinion, it was rather weak writing. Uh, Batman in the new 52, just as my Batman uh, subscription ran out, was doing this Batopia thing that was across all the Batman series of books, which made it awful because that means you had to have, to get the whole story, you had to have seen Batman, Batman and Robin, Batgirl, uh, Robin Alone, I think was a book. Uh, there's there's some other ones too. I'm sure there was like two or more. Batwoman was probably included mm -hmm. somewhat a little bit. Mm -hmm. So like the entire Batman family of series of books is about six or seven Ooh. different series that come out once a month. Mm -hmm. The other issue with DC I will say is they really don't have any kids books at all. There's really not a great way to keep a kid entertained for a month. You'll just end up getting frustrated or the kid will end up being frustrated because a lot of the kids books don't come out on a monthly basis. There's not that many of them. It's like three. Teen Titans is not a a kid's book. So let me let me throw that out there as one that doesn't work. There is Teen Titans, but it is at best a teenage book. Oh yeah. Let's talk about what was going on in the new 52 with the uh, Teen Titans. Uh, a weird time travel story was part of it, where the young Flash was from the future, and a lot of romance, more nudity than you would expect, uh, some creature was kidnapping metahumans, so people with powers that were young and trying to make them stronger by like throwing them in, in like an island I think it was and fighting each other to the death and he would put some weird like marks on them that looked like circuit boards and I swear one of the scenes was once the Teen Titans uh, and some other people escape from him, they're like in this lake with these weird tattoos and this one character and her brother are like totally naked in this lake trying to wash off these circuit boards but they're like embedded in the skin and I'm like this is Teen Titans. This, this is getting closer to X-rated Titans than Teen Titans. 
So yeah, if you're underage, I don't think you should be reading Team Die. And that's kind of the problem with all the DC comic books. Is that they all get they all get you in trouble if you're an underage kid and your parents. Uh, what would be the way to get down there? Like, if I do Cyborg, will he swim to the bottom? Maybe this is an Aquaman thing. Maybe that's what I have to do. Up. Now, Teen Titans Go! is a kid's book. But it's about the only one. Uh, I think for a short time there was the bat animals. Bat dog, bat cow. Some of these things. But just the general darkness of the world in the DC universe. There's just no... There just isn't a lot of happiness in that universe at all. Uh, like I said, when I was getting Batman and Robin, Robin was dead, and so the Robin that, that was dead was, I believe, actually Batman's son, and he's like eight years old, and they figure out how to bring him back with the Lazarus Pit, and he's just like crazy, murderous at that point, and violent. So, I mean, just dark. It, I come from a, a strange mentality about that whole thing. It's, it seems just weird. Uh, yes, because as a video game player, I know video games aren't just for kids always. Although this video game is for kids. But I've never had a real experience where a, a series of a studio that made kids video games then just drastically changes over the years. I can't think of any example of that. Um, like, I don't think Atari or anybody else has done anything to, to that level. Sure, they may try to stretch out cover both, but if, for example, the creators of this game, TT Games, Traveler's Tales, uh, games, uh, actually it's both, they have a parent company and all that, where is it, oh no, got eight seconds to get over there, I missed it, three seconds, If Traveler's Tales or TT Games came back and they said they were going to start making adult-only rated games, I would find that very odd, very surprising. And that's kind of what DC has done. And Marvel's not terribly better than that, but they are definitely a lot better. Marvel, you can still get, like, a, at least a decent few uh, kids' books. <laughs> and Spider-Man is not always going to be dark and and scary. And you, you really see the uh, dark and violent. You really see the difference in just the way the movies are made. And so, here's Batgirl. That's kind of a shame you have to find to, and unlock Batgirl. I think if they were smarter, they would have had Batgirl by default unlocked. Just so you could play as 
a girl if you wanted to play as a girl. Plus, I think she deserves. I like Batgirl, and I, I think she deserves deserves to have taken place and had some interaction in the main story. Yeah, I would think that it would, it's only fair that all the Batman uh, would have been available. So I have to this. Get that to come up. Interesting. But yeah, it. The reboot system is a snake eating its own tail, though. Ideally, in theory, I do want them to reboot and change and include, have more kid-friendly books and be light lighter uh, and all of that. But inherently, we have seen over several, several reboots, that's not what happens. What happens is they go in a different direction that is just as bad, if not worse, usually worse than the direction they were in before. It, it's a failure of leadership at the top. It's a failure of editorial, not being either two hands on or two hands off, one or the other, and it's hard to tell which is the truth. I think from what I've heard, the editorial department in DC it just has all this control over everything and that it becomes a, an issue where you can't tell a story. They built it again, but that was Batgirl. We are already freed her. Um, Uh, one of the things DC does, which is just super nasty, too, is they will reference other comic books. So the only enjoyable way to read a DC comic book is to have known the proper order to read all 51 of their other comic books that came out that month. Because literally, a Batman will reference what happened in Batman and Robin and Supergirl will reference what happened in Superman and it's just all these cross references and cross references and so if you want the full story you've got to get them all and that's the only way they want you to do it and that's ridiculous comic books are like three dollars you'd be spending over hundred fifty dollars every month on comic books I don't even spend hundred fifty dollars on video games <laughs> every month. Maybe some months, but not every month. And then they'll throw in an annual around Christmas and make you pay five dollars on that on top of it. So 50 ti 52 times five dollars, there's another extra cost of 250 or 260 dollars right there. Anywho, we're at 64.8% done, as I'm ranting about all the problems with DC. As always, I ask you to like, share, comment if you want to, and watch every second of my videos. All that helps out. If you want to support me, you can click on My Name Rido. On the right is a blue button that says Support This Channel. Click it, make a donation. And if you want to friend or follow me on basically any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.